Stand up. Who's glad to be here this morning? I am just ecstatic to be here. It is so good to see all of you. You all look beautiful today. So give yourself a pat on the back for that. Yes. In your presence once again. Under open heaven we declare the miracles can happen. There is no one like you. No one like you. Here we go. We're glad to be here. This is the place. Don't miss your moment. Take a chance, strike up the music, release your sound, he's here to meet us here and now. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, here we are. Standing in your presence once again Under open heaven we declare The miracles can happen There is no one like you No one like you We're glad to be here This is the place, is the place. Don't miss your moment Take a chance Don't today miss your moment Take a chance Under open heaven we declare The miracles can happen There is no one like you No one like you Here we are Standing in your presence once again Under open heaven we declare The miracles can happen There is no one like you No one like you
to start a service. We can all join in prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for the wonders and miracles that are going to take place in this place today. We thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost that's going to fall in this place. God, we ask that you open our hearts and minds to your spirit, God, and that your will take place, Lord. God, we ask that you anoint the man of God as he brings forth the word today. God, that you make us sensitive to your will in this place, God. That lives be touched and hearts be changed. God, that all burdens can be laid at the altar today and we can walk away from here better than when we came in. God, we seek your move in this place. We seek to praise you in this place. God, we exalt your name in all of its glory. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we lift you up. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, worship today, worship. So oh. 
circumstances would change. I pray that the fear, I that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, oh, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Yes, I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name. to the Lord today. Good to have Kenzie back from Texas. Let's get worship with her today. Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Tell you that. 
Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? Aren't you thankful that no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, he, it's never too big for him. He can always solve the problem. Um, that was beautiful, Kenzie. We're, we're glad you're here today. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, quickly, I want to go over our announcements. It is still Pastor Appreciation Month, in case you forgot, since I've said that every service this month. But next Sunday is going to be our Pastor Appreciation Service. So you have a couple more services if you would like to bring something. We do have the basket in the back, and you can drop something in there or bring something next Sunday for Pastor Appreciation Service. Um, we'll have choir practice immediately following service today. If you haven't already, it's not too late to join the Blackwell Choir. Um, on the Blackwell Church app, there is a choir channel in the, the chat. Um, so if you go to the chat and you go to discover, you can join that choir channel and um, the song and everything is there. So it's not too late. This is our first practice for the song. So you can still join if you'd like to do that after church immediately today. Um, we have Brother Derek and Sister India um, evangelists with us today. We're excited to have them. They're going to be here on Wednesday as well. So make plans to be here Wednesday as well um, for that. I know they're going to bless us and we're excited to hear what they have to say, what they have to share with us. Um, Trunk or Treat is coming up quickly. It is next Saturday. I'm excited about it. Are you excited about it? You should be. If you're not, get excited. So it is next Saturday from 6.30 to 8. Um, we do still need some trunks. So if you've been on the fence, please, anyone can do a trunk. The only stipulation is we don't do anything scary or, you know, inappropriate. But, like, I'm doing Winnie the Pooh. So you can do, you, anybody can do a trunk. And so we would love to have you participate in that. We also need food. We're going to do soups and desserts like we have done in the past. So if you have a prize winning soup that you make, we would love for you to bring that um, as well as desserts. You can see Caitlin to get signed up for what you're going to bring. We'd like to at least have an idea of what we're going to have. So Caitlin, raise your hand. See Caitlin, sign up for what you want to bring. Um, Brandy is also helping her with the food. So when you bring it on Saturday, you can look for either one of them to see where you need to set up, where it needs to be. Um, also, if you have a trunk that you haven't signed up for, please let Keisha know because she is she's back there in the booth today, but she is keeping track of our trunks. So um, we're excited about that. We do have some flyers still. If you have a break room at work, you can hang a flyer in. A gas station by your house, you can hang a flyer at. Um, we have a bunch of flyers still in the back on the guest services table. You can take those with you and share that. We have all week still to promote it. So invite your family, your friends, your coworkers. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. And then quickly, I just wanted to go over November. We have had a lot going on in October. Um, I haven't really focused on the November announcements. They are all on the Blackwell Church app. So please take a moment and look at your calendars. Add those to your calendars. Um, we have family month starting in November. The 2nd of November is going to be a fireside worship and word. We're going to do a little bit of a different service that night. Um, Sunday Fun Day is going to be our annual Thanksgiving dinner for the church. That's on the 6th. We have Taco Tuesday Ladies Bible Study on the 8th. That's going to be in Bloomington. The address and the time and everything, all that's in your app. So take a look at that. Add it to your calendar. We also have National Youth Convention coming up this month, which is super exciting. Um, the youth have, have been preparing for this. We have some more fundraising we're going to try to do this month um, to get them all the way there. But we're excited to take this group this year. This will be um, the first year for some of them to go and the first year for some of them in the youth. So we're really excited about that. So keep them in your prayers as we prepare for National Youth Convention. The week of Thanksgiving, we will not have a Wednesday night service. That's kind of typically how we've done things because a lot of us go to NYC that week. So, um, But please, look at your Blackwell Church app. Add the November events to your calendar so that you know what's going on. And plan to be a part of those things with us. Praise the Lord. Last night, the youth went to... Clark Ranch had a big turnout there. It was a good time. Uh, let's give Brother Andrew and Sister Karen a hand. Praise the Lord. Lord. Appreciate their hard work there. We're excited. Family month is going to be really kind of uh, very cool. Um, we have our Indiana District Superintendent and his wife, Brother Tim and Sister Faith Gill, are 
going to be speaking for us on the 9th. Uh, the date has escaped my memory, but we're also having uh, Pastor Joe and Sister Cindy Nelson are going to be coming in to preach for us. And they were my pastor, well, actually my youth leader back years and years ago when I was a kid and uh, have been have spoken my life, my family's pastor ever since we got in church you know, 40 years ago. So I, I'm excited to, to have these folks come in. They're going to be a tremendous blessing to us, both sets of husband and wife. We'll be talking about family in lots of different ways. Uh, and don't just say, oh, it's going to be another. No, it's not. I trust, trust me, you're going to be moved in the Holy Ghost. You're going to be encouraged if you will open up your heart and receive the word from some pretty awesome parents that are going to be coming in and, and speaking to us and some great uh, leaders, um, just tremendous leaders. We're excited about that. I hope you plan, just plan not to miss a service in November. And you will be blessed when you come out and your family's going to be strengthened. Amen. Praise the Lord. And while you're at it, you might as well say, I am not going to miss Wednesday. Because we are going to have Brother Derek and Sister India back on Wednesday, kind of do a back-to-back -back mini revival of sorts. And we're going to uh, have the, uh, this, this one-two punch theirs is going to be with us to minister to us again on Sunday. But I'm excited to invite them to come to the pulpit today and minister to us. Kids are dismissed to Sunday school. Brother Derek and Sister Indy were a part of this ministry years ago, uh, sitting in the same pews you're sitting in, uh, helped build the building, helped be involved in, in uh, so many things, uh, taking rubber off the back of the carpet tiles to uh, building, building walls and, and uh, carrying block and hod. Uh, I'm thankful for their hard work and their dedication while they were with us, but they took that to the field are reaping souls and, and being a blessing all over the nation and they have been all over the nation and we're thankful for this couple coming and, and being a part today we invite them to come right now and minister the word to us today Brother Derek Jane Praise the Lord everyone I wonder if we could take a moment just right now, if we could stand to our feet, if we could raise our hands and give God the glory that he deserves. Jesus, I love you. I praise you. He's in this room with us today. Let's just linger here for a moment. He's right here. You feel his power, his presence. Jesus, I love you. Jesus. Hey, Amen. It is so good to be with you guys this morning, this afternoon, whatever time of day it is. I give honor to Pastor Bowen. Thank you so much for having us and your family, everyone, my friend, Brother Andrew. I want to give honor to my beautiful wife. I'm going to ask her if she would come. She's going to sing for us. I give honor to little Ari. He's already run back in the back, but normally about this time, he'll give me a thumbs up, a wave, something. He'll give me something. I wonder if you guys would just worship with us as she sings. Praise the Lord, everyone. I kept waking up through the middle of the night with this song on my heart, and I desire more than anything.
that I would be emptied of anything and of any of my desires and my will and for him to fill me today. I wonder if we could just make this song a prayer before the word of God comes forth today. to Genesis chapter 12, and I want to begin reading in verse 1, but I want to ask you a question before we we start reading the Word. The songs today, so many of them were about miracles, 
And we sing about it. It sounds good. It, but do you really believe it? Do you really believe that before you walk out of those doors back there, you could be healed? Do you really believe that before you leave those doors, not that you could be touched, but that you will be changed? But that there will be a miracle, a healing, a sign, something miraculous done in this room this day. Not next week, not Wednesday night, but today. I feel like God wants to do that today, but we've got to make up our mind. It will happen. It shall happen. It is going to happen. I'd like to turn to Genesis chapter 12 and begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went forth with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. This morning I want to speak to you just for a few minutes from the thought, possess the promise. Possess the promise. Let us pray. I love you, Father. I praise your name. I ask that you would move upon each and every one of us today, Lord. Anoint me, Lord, as I speak forth your word, God. And anoint each and every one of us to receive your word, Lord, to act upon it and to be changed by it, Lord. Let there be miracles, signs, and wonders done in this room today, in this service, God. I love you, Father. I praise your name in Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen. And you may be seated. Think for just a moment about the the promises, the things that God has promised you, the things that you feel like God wants to do in your life, the things that you feel like God wants to do, for example, in your body, the healings that you feel like God wants to give you, the, the blessings that God wants to pour out on you. We've all got promises from God. We've all got things that we feel like, thank you, sir, that God wants to do in our lives, that God wants to do in our ministry. And just like we have, Abraham had a promise from the Lord. I was reading through Genesis yesterday, and so many times the Lord speaks to him. The Lord makes him promise after promise after promise. This was the first of many. But there are places in there that God says, I want to give this Canaan land, I want to give this promise to you and to your seed as an everlasting covenant forever and ever. He says to you and to your seed. To you and all those that are going to come after you. So Abraham follows what God's called him to do. He he gets rid of everything he can't take with him, sells his house, whatever that may have been. And he goes following after the Lord. He goes seeking the promise. I want to show you something here. He went to the promised land. Abraham went to the land that God said, I'm going to make yours. to, To the land that we call Canaan. And he began to live there. But he didn't go in as a victorious, triumphing man, possessing the promise that God has given him. He goes in, and the Bible tells us he travels around different places. Sojourning through the land, traveling around. He'll live here for a little bit, then he'll live there. Traveling around almost in a caravan type type style situation. With Lot, his family, his herds, his servants. A wealthy man, sure. Well off, sure. He, he had, God had blessed him. But he was just living within what God had promised him. But he wasn't at this point possessing the land. Think about it. He's living in the promised land. He's walking around through here. Sure, he goes down to Egypt for a little bit. He comes back. He'll travel over to this part. He'll travel over to that part. He's camping in the land that God's promised him. Living alongside the heathen nations who are reaping harvest from the land. and Who are, they're the ones possessing the land. 
living in the promise, but he's not possessing the promises of God. He lives there a hundred years and finally dies. And as he's growing older, he buys some of the land that God had promised him so that he would have somewhere that he could be buried. He doesn't take it triumphantly like the Lord has promised him. He doesn't march in with his armies and with his servants armed and and go possess the land and take it from those uncircumcised Philistines, if you will. From all the Canaanites that were living there. But he goes in, he squats on the promise of God. And as he's growing older, he buys a plot of land to be buried on. He's paying for the very land that God has promised him. And Isaac is born. And then Isaac has Jacob. And then Jacob has Joseph. And they're still living in a land that was promised to them. They're squatting on God's promise. They're in the promise, but they're not possessing the promise. I want to tell you today, we're apostolic. We believe the apostolic doctrine. We are baptized in Jesus' name. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We've got the power of Jesus Christ inside us. But do we possess it? Think about it. We're living in the promise of God, we're living in salvation. But do we really possess the power that the apostles had? We live in their doctrine. We follow their rules. But do we have what they had? We're following the letter of the law. But is that getting us what they had? You see, Peter was walking through the into the temple, and he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ that we baptize in, in the name of Jesus Christ who's living in us, rise up and walk. We've got his name, but do we possess the power Of his name. Think about it this morning. Too often. Sick come to the altar. And they leave the same way they came. Too often. Visitors walk in. Needing deliverance. Needing a change. But too often they leave the same way they walked in. We've got the name. We've got the power. We're living in the promise. But just as Abraham bought land to be buried on, Sometimes we go to the doctor and and buy medicine or buy this to heal our bodies instead of just speaking it. Instead of just praying, and I'm not against doctors, but we shouldn't have to rely on them so much. I'm not against going to the doctor when you're sick. But if we had what Paul had, for example, where they would take the garments that he was wearing, cut them up, and take them to the sick, and they were healed. That's where we get prayer cloths from. If we had that power and that anointing, we could take my tie today and empty the hospital. Do we really possess it? Or are we just squatting in the promises of God, but not really reaping them, not really receiving them? Sometimes we can get Comfortable and content, knowing that we're going to heaven. Because we are. 
We've been baptized in Jesus' name. We've been filled with the Holy Ghost. We live according to what the Bible teaches. But we don't possess the rest of it. We get content knowing that we're going to make it to heaven. So we're all right if if we don't have the power. We're all right if we don't. We can be comfortable, grow satisfied living in the promise, but not possessing the promise just as Abraham did. He lived the rest of his life. God, you promised me this land. You said you were going to give it to me and to my seed. Not just to my seed. He said he was going to give it to Abraham and to his seed. To Abraham and everyone that followed after him. We can grow comfortable living there. God, you promised me this. So I'm going to sit here and wait for it. but never really possess it. But never really, really reach for it. There's so much more to this than salvation. There's so much more to this than just making it to heaven. There's so much more that we could have. Look at this, Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob. They lived in the promise for 193 years. But they never possessed it. They lived there. They believed that God was going to give it to them, but they never did anything to get it. They were satisfied waiting until they died and then letting their son wait until they died, but never really reach out and try to take it. You see, to take the promises of God, to possess the promises of God, to reach out and use the power of God takes effort. It takes more than just waiting. Well, God, you promised it to me, so I'm going to wait for it, and I'm going to wait for it, and I'm going to. So they just lived. So they just went day to day in the promise. This is what I want to tell you. It's about time. There's Abraham, there's Isaac, there's Jacob going on and on. God promised it 193 years ago. Isn't it about time that someone would step up and possess the promise? They've been waiting. They've been praying. They've been talking to the Lord. They've been, but it's about time that they possess it. There's so many promises in the Word of God. I want to tell you this morning, it's about time that we possess them. There's so many promises in the Word of God. By His stripes, we are healed. But sometimes we don't ever reach out and possess, take, accept, receive the healing. It's already paid for. Just like salvation, it's already paid for. It's, all, it's just waiting on us to receive it. It's just waiting on us to reach out and to possess it. And we don't like it. But sometimes. It takes some persecution to push us out of our comfort zone. You see, they 
somehow had contented themselves with just living there. Well, God, this isn't what we thought it would look like. But I guess this is the promised land you gave us. God, I thought we were going to come in as an army. I thought we were going to come in and we were going to own the land. But, but somehow, I guess, God, I just didn't understand the promise. Because I've been living here, most likely paying taxes to the nations around us. I've been living here buying land from those heathens. And I didn't think the promise was going to look like this. But I guess this is just what we get. I guess this is what God meant all along. And I just added... Think about it in your situation. Think about it in your life. You know the story. This is when the persecution comes. Because we've had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They've lived here 193 years. But Jacob has Joseph. You know the story, Joseph is sent down to Egypt as a slave. Because none of his forefathers were taking the land. So God said, we've got to do something about this. We've got to break the cycle. We've got to get someone out of their comfort zone to a desperate situation. So they'll seek me. Because you see, when Joseph got in that situation, I can promise you, he wasn't content to be a slave in Egypt. He wasn't, I'm sure he had been raised hearing the promises. We're going to own this land. God said we can have this land. God said we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God said that we had power over spirits and they will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. I know right now it seems like I'm in slavery. But I'm hanging on to the promise. And you see, in that situation, he could not be content with his surroundings. There was no way he could be content with where he was. Sometimes it takes that situation that takes us if you will, so far out of the will of God even. So far away from the promises. So far away from where we thought we were going to be. So far away from where we even should be. To get us to a place of desperation. Where we will seek the promise. Where we won't be content. Where we won't be happy. With what, with, with what our life, where our life is and what's going on in our situation. To a place of desperation even. Don't ever give up on your promise. Don't ever give up on, on what you feel God is going to do with you. I don't care if you're in slavery in the middle of Egypt, thousands of miles away from the promise of God. If God said he was going to use you, I don't care if you're sitting in a bar room somewhere. If God said he was going to use you, I don't care if it looks impossible. Maybe that's what it took for that desire to be rekindled. Maybe that's what it took to make you seek after God. Like the generations before you hadn't done. Don't ever doubt that it shall happen. Don't ever give up on it. Don't ever speak a word against it. And say, oh, that's what God said, but I'm too far gone now. That's what God said, but it could never happen now. You see, there was a generation of people 
that couldn't be sustained in the land that God had promised them. Joseph went down there in slavery. But Jacob, his brothers, all their family, their lineage, the Bible says there was a famine in the land. And they weren't sustained. They couldn't find sustenance in the promises, in the promised land of God. They didn't feel like what God had promised them was able to sustain them. So they turned their back on the promises of God, and they went to Egypt. And that that entire generation died in Egypt. Whenever you turn your back on the Lord, there is always a price to be paid. Whenever you give up on the promise of God, there's a price. Doesn't mean you'll never see it. It doesn't mean you'll never get there. But there will still be a price because you see every single one of them died in Egypt. And since they gave up on the promise, the next generation had to pay for it. You see Acts 7 And 17, watch this. But when the time of the promise drew nigh. It's about time. Let me tell you, this was was promised all the way in Genesis 12. Way back with Abraham. He traveled. He had kids. They had kids. They had kids. And they had kids. It's been over 200 years. And the thing that God promised has still not happened. But here it says, Acts 7 and 17, Stephen preaching. It's when the time of the promise drew nigh. When it was just about time for the promise. Which God had sworn to Abraham. The people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The Bible tells us it's almost time for the promise. The promise that God swore to Abraham that I read a moment ago. When the time for that promise drew nigh, it's almost time. Another king arises, which knows not Joseph. Then this continues... In Exodus 1 and 8, it says, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And when he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there's a falling out, any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up and out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them, With burdens. Verse 12 says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they grew and multiplied. I want to show you something here. It's about time for the promise. It's about time for the promise. But then we read a couple more scriptures, and that's just when they begin the slavery. That seems backwards. God, I, you said it was about time for the promise. But then, why are we entering into slavery? It's about time for the promise, but, but why is this trial come up against me? It's about time for the promise, but, but why am I going through this situation that's driving me farther from the promise? It's about time. Can someone say with me, it's just about time. It's just about time. It's been over 200 years now. They're entering into slavery. Joseph has died at this point. God, when is the promise ever going to happen? 
God, I've been waiting for it. I've been believing in it. I've been praying about it. I've been seeking you for it. But it seems like I'm farther away than I've ever been in my entire life. It seems like the closer we sometimes get, the more persecution comes against us. It seems sometimes like the closer we get to working for the Lord, the closer we get to receiving the thing that he's promised us, the more things just begin to come against us, the more they begin to fight us. But watch this. The more they were persecuted, the more God blessed them. The devil cannot stop your promise. The more he tries to stop it, God will stand up behind you and say, no, 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 devil. I said that was going to happen. If you want to raise up more enemies against them, I'll raise up more on their side. If you want to raise up more persecution against them, I'll just make them stronger. I'll just make them wiser. I'll just help them a little bit more. The more the devil tries to stop your promise, the more things get in the way of your promise, the more God will bless you, the more God will multiply you, the more God will create you and make you and strengthen you. You are not responsible for making the promises of God come to pass in your life. You are not responsible. You've got to do your best. You've got to try. You can't be content living in the land. But ultimately, if you're doing your best, it's up to God. So that entire generation of Joseph and all that went down there with him dies. The people of Israel go into slavery for a year. Now, God already said it was about time. God already said the time of the promise was drawing nigh before they ever started the slavery. But now it's been a year in slavery. And then two. And three. And five. And ten. But it's about time. God said the time of the promise was drawing nigh. Now we've been in slavery for 10 years. God, what are you thinking? That doesn't seem like it's drawing nigh. That doesn't seem like it's getting close. 20 years in slavery. But God, you promised a land that was flowing with milk and honey. You promised us the Canaan land. And here we are living in Egypt in slavery. There's no way. Maybe Abraham thought he was living in the promise. Maybe Isaac, maybe Jacob, but they know that they're not in the promise. They know that there's no way they could be in the promise of God. About 20 years passes in slavery. Pharaoh dies and a new Pharaoh comes up. And he says, oh, these people are way too strong. There's too many of them. Kill all the um, boy children that are born. We'll keep the girls, kill all the boys. God, isn't this getting even farther? But then Moses is born. Okay, God, I, 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 see, what you're, I see where you're going with this. And we know the story. Moses goes in with Pharaoh's daughter. And all of a sudden, Moses is just living in there. Pharaoh's daughter raising him. His people are outside in slavery. God said it was about time. God said they were going to possess the promise pretty soon. But he lives in there for 40 more years. Learning the ways of the Egyptians. Learning that these people that are his are really supposed to be slaves and all this. Forty more years in slavery. And he, he finally says, okay, I'm going to do something about it. He walks out, he, he kills an Egyptian. And long story short, he runs off in the wilderness. But, but God, you were raising up our Savior. 
You were raising up the one that was going to make this come to pass. You were raising up the one. Has anyone ever felt like this with your promises? Has anyone ever felt like God was going to do something for you? Like God was, and then it just, it gets, it gets put on delay. And it, it gets put on delay again. And one thing after another, it just seems like it's never going to happen. And just when God was raising someone up to do what he said he was going to do, just when he stands up and he kills the Egyptian, he runs off in the wilderness for another 40 years. He marries a woman. He's happy living out in the wilderness. He's content out there. He's married a woman. He's got kids. He's living out in the wilderness. But it's, a, it's about time. Come on. Come on, Moses. It's been 120 years at least. We've been in slavery. God said he was going to do it soon. But it seems like I'm more bound up now than I ever was. God said he was going to deliver me. God said he was going to heal me. But it seems like my health is getting worse and worse. It's not... It's about time. There's a burning bush. He comes back. We, he comes to Moses, or he comes to Pharaoh. He, he says all the things. They have the plagues. They have all this. And God hardens Pharaoh's heart. Just when they could be delivered, God stops it from happening. Plague number one happens. And God said, no, Pharaoh, don't let him go yet. Plague number two happens, and God says, no, Pharaoh, it's not time yet. Plague number seven, number eight, number nine, and God says, no, not time yet, Pharaoh. Nope, not yet. I'm going to deliver them, but we've got to wait a little bit longer. Because if they think that they were able to get out of this slavery on their own, they've got to know that it was me. Luke 18, verse 7 says, And God, or and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him? Watch this. Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. When God's going to work something in our life, when God's going to do something. He waits, and he waits. As the Bible says, he bears long. He waits, and he waits, and he waits. And he lets us try to do it on our own. He lets us try to make it happen on our own and fail. And he waits, and he waits. But then whenever God moves, it's just like the rapture is going to be in the twinkling of an eye. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, so fast that I can't take credit for it. So fast that you can't take credit for it. So fast that we can't say, oh, the, the medicine I took healed my body. No. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. They've been in slavery for so many years. It's been prophesied. It's been promised. It's, it's been tried. They tried to convince Moses, or convince Pharaoh to let him go. But the Bible says, they crossed over the Red Sea in one day. They'd been in slavery for years, and years, and years, and years. They'd been living in Egypt. Before that, they were living in the promise, but not possessing the promise. But whenever God got ready to do it. It didn't take, there wasn't a long, drawn-out process. It didn't take six months to convince, no, it happened in one day. In one moment, he said, all right, this is the final blow. This is the final thing. I'm going to kill all their firstborn like they've been killing yours. And then you're going to leave, and it's going to happen so fast 
that Moses can't take the credit. It's going to happen so fast that Aaron can't take the credit. It's going to be only to the glory of God. And that's what's going to happen in your life. That's what's going to happen in your situation. I know you've been trying for so long. And I know God promised it, and it seemed like years ago it was about time. But today, it's about time. It's time to possess the promise. It's time to possess what God said we could have. It's time to reach out in faith and grab a hold of it. If you would stand with me. I wonder if there's anyone in this place that that feels like they've got a promise like that and they've just been put on hold. If you would make your way up to this altar. Today, don't allow yourself to be content with salvation. Today, don't allow yourself to be happy with anything less than what God has promised. I want to tell you, ever since the service started, they've sang about miracles. If you feel like God promised you a miracle, claim it. If you feel like God promised you a healing, reach for it. Make up your mind that today is the day. I want to tell someone, it's about time. We've been through persecution. We've been through trials. We've been through problems. We've been through so many things. It's about time that you receive what God promised today. There's revival 
if we could close our eyes across this place and think about that promise. Think about the thing you felt God was going to do. Maybe you've even given up on it by now. This is what I want us to do. Don't, don't ask God for it. Believe Him for it. Don't ask God to do the thing He's promised. He already said He was going to do it. But believe that it is done. And there's that song we used to sing so long ago, Praise Him in Advance. That doesn't have to be a dance. That doesn't have to be a shout. But I wonder if we could lift up our hands across this place and praise God from the bottom of our heart for what he promised us he was going to do. Believe it and thank him for it. Don't ask for it. Praise about it. Jesus, I praise you. I thank you, God. It's the same God who's here I thank you, Lord, for doing that thing in my life. Even in my darkest moments. Let's lift up our voices and sing this song together. 